Uh, it's AB. Uh, okay. I want to talk to you a few uh, housekeeping details before we get down to business. First of all, um, this class, there's no lab component. This is our lab. You know, our two hours is combination is the equivalent of three lectures a week and then one lab section per week in the conventional course. But we do it all here. And so for that reason, attendance is extremely important. And I can't have um, in my normal lecture sections, our clickers, I have an allowance for missing a few lectures. Okay. But we can't in this. So if you're not here for clicking, it's going to directly, you don't have any leeway. You know, like in my other class, usually one or two lectures you could, you could miss and still not get a dent in your clicking. But this one, starting Monday, your clicking is going to be, and your classwork, uh, are, if your classwork today as well, uh, are going to be um, for points. All right. And so you have to. So, it, you know, I, I and the reason I mentioned that is I got some messages from students over the past few days. Oh, Dr. B, I, I won't be here Friday. Oh, I won't be here Monday uh, for various reasons. And. You know, everything in this, everything at UCF is voluntary. I mean, high school, up until age 16, you had to be there, you know, or the cops would come after you, or they'd come after your parents, right? But here, everything is voluntary, so I can't force you. Uh, but the grades, you know, if, if you drop out, you know, if you drop a, a lecture because you have to go to a job interview or something like that, that's up to you. But I'm still going to be counting the, the points on that day. So and you're not going to have any. There's no leeway. There's now the only leeway that we have are exams. We're going to drop one out of three if you're here for three. If you have to have an excused absence for an exam, that's going to be even excused absence. That's going to be your dropped exam, right? But as for lectures, we got it. You know, you just got to be here, right? It's a little bit different than a regular lecture section. I just want to say welcome back, everybody, from Hurricane Dorian. Uh, we lost a week, basically. So this is actually um, session number five. But I hope everybody's uh, – anybody have relatives in the Bahamas? That place got really blazed. You know, look at that. That's the, that's the map of the locations – of the eye of the hurricane versus, uh, I don't know, Fort Pierce or something like that. West Palm Beach. The West Palm Beach Airport, I think it was. I mapped that out. It was bad for them. All right. Uh, another thing I want to go over, there's some grades in your grades page, if you care to look. You may have noticed, which is one. Well, you have the homework zero, the attendance quiz, you know, 7,000 points. Uh, of course, that doesn't go into your grade, so but you can feel nice about getting 7,000 7, points. Early iClicker registration from last Wednesday is up if you were registered uh, by last Wednesday. And guess what? Most uh, The majority of class got that, so that's good. I think 60 out, of 100, 60 out of 99, something like that. So you'll see a one up there. Now, that just think that of any bonus point that you get as being attached to the final, one more point on the final. All right. Just think of it that way. Now we're going to have another one uh, for today. And then Monday, we won't have bonus points. We'll just have regular uh, participation pointage. All right. That's when, so today's a deadline still. Now uh, here's the, uh, here's the bonus point. And let me make it a little bit bigger. There it is. And we'll have another one. I'll post it a little bit later today, probably. By the way, you know, we're we're still, you know, this is this was bad timing for the hurricane because my first week is always kind of slow. And if today I feel really slow as well, because it's only the third third meeting, although it's the fifth on the calendar, it's you know, we missed a full week. So uh, but we're going to try to get back up to speed here and get these grades in and stuff like that. Now, I have a 
uh, a rude awakening for these 10 people. You're not registered with your eye clicker yet. Zyra Speckstein, Emma Coyne, Melanie Del Toro, Christopher Montez, Eduardo. Look, I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to make, you know, you feel bad or anything, but you got to get on it. Today's the last day. Uh, Eduardo Morzan, Nika, uh, Nicolashvili, Gabrielle Ramos, Joshua Ross, Anupa Thermia, and uh, Jared Zach. So uh, get those babies registered, and you have to register them in web courses. Don't go to iClicker.com. That won't work. I mean, you can register them there, but I won't get, I don't synchronize from iClicker.com. I synchronize from web courses. All right. Questions about any of that? Most of you guys are, are on are, are on the, the roster. So most of you guys are going to get a bonus point today. These are, the, these are the guys that still barely have a chance if they can get registered before I download the, the grades and stuff. Uh, and anyways, uh, if there's no more questions. All right, let's get down to business. Look at this photo of this young lady with her hands on that silver sphere. And I don't, I don't see any around the room. Is there one over there in the corner? A Van de Graaff generator? Like the, this, that, that thing's called the Van de Graaff generator. And it won't work when, the, like, today because the air is so humid it won't work for beans but this must have been a very nice uh, dry day and uh hopefully in a few weeks we'll we'll bring that in and and you know you guys can you know see if your hair will fly out into the universe like this young ladies and we've we've got some really good examples from here at UCF so we're going to start this idea of the coulomb interaction uh, which is also known as the electrostatic force. Um, so let's get down to business. Hold the power button down on your clicker and then type in AB if it's not already. And then you'll get a go nitro message. And then I think it'll say ready. All right. Anybody see the go nitro? Raise your hand if you, if you got the go nitro. All right, good. All right, so we're going to do some clicking now. That, and I'm recording this, so this will go on YouTube. And just so you know, um, these clicker questions I've designed in a sequence. So this is like taking notes. All right. And you're going to be taking notes with your clicker uh, on the side, you know, because you're going to be answering questions. Now, I'm assuming that everybody has... Raise your hand if you've had chemistry here at UCF. See, that's a big number. So raise your hand if you had chemistry in high school. Okay, so that's a big number. Now, I'm assuming that everybody's heard about electrons and protons in the atom and stuff. Okay, so that's basic. So that's where we're going to start. All right, here's question number one. Which is the correct description of electrons and or protons? That diagram over there to the right is called a Feynman diagram. And it's, uh, that model's an electron in blue. The two lines are an electron and the squiggly line is a photon. Photon of light. Okay, 10 seconds to vote. 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Okay, Let's see how you guys did. Um, yeah, most of you got that one right. Okay, so that's an easy one. Now, now what I'm doing. I'm building you up. We're starting out with something cinchy. Every, let me look at that again. Let me look at the results. Yeah, 99. Somebody said none of the above. But everybody else, 99% of you said C. So that's good. Now let's do another question. Oh, uh, by the way, about that uh, Feynman diagram, 
that particular diagram is phenomenally important. All of quantum field theory is based on that one diagram and, and variations of that diagram. Uh, and uh, so it's, it's a pretty famous and useful concept. All right, let's try another question. Question two, which is a correct description of electrons and or protons. Go ahead and vote. And as with everything in my class, uh, Caitlin, read carefully. All right, 10 seconds to vote. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay, 80 responses. And uh, most of you got that one correct. 89% of you got it correct. Uh, that's good. Now, I have a, a another question. Now, this one's going to lead to a little bit trickier, a little more difficult question. I want you to look at this Feynman diagram, right? The blue lines and attached to the, the band in the lines is a photon squiggle, right? So here's a question for you. How do you uh, interpret that part of the that part over there, the, the blue line coming downwards. All right. Now, I want you to hit the refresh button on your calculator, on your, your eye clicker. All right. And then I want you to um, give me your interpretation, uh, a word or a phrase, and we'll look at some of your answers. And then hit the send key. So type in a word or a phrase. And if you don't, raise your hand if you don't know how to type in numbers and letters. Oh, uh, uh, Nick, uh, who's got a clicker up here? Uh, Chris, Krishna, let me see. So what you do, what you do, can you switch this to document camera? All right, so what you do is uh, let me start this question first of all. Okay. All right. Now hit the refresh. Hit refresh. Okay. Now it says A. Now the way to choose a different letter is to go downward. These are numbers. Um, and then you go to the right. And you can choose another one. Um, All right, so there's the rest of the alphabet above A. And so then you go over to the right. Now, you can't write a sonnet. You just got to, I think you've got 14 characters limit. So just give me a word or a little phrase. But think about, okay, can you switch it back to, switch it back to laptop? Okay, Krishna. And, uh. How do you interpret that arrow that's pointing downhill? And look at the labeling of the axes. One is the, C, the temporal axis CT, the speed of light times the time coordinate. And the horizontal one is the X coordinate. So both, both axes are measured in meters or nanometers or light years or whatever you want to use for distance. So how do you, and this one we can actually look at the answers. Hmm. It's interesting. Do not interpret that. Do not interpret that Feynman diagram. That part of it. That branch, the downhill 
downhill to the left. I'll give you guys a minute to do that. Krishna, are you, is your thing clicking good? Did you delete the stuff that I typed in there? I just typed in some random. Okay. And when you're done, uh, hit the send key because it doesn't know when you're done. When you're doing uh, multiple choice, all you got to do is click one of the letter keys. But for this numeric or alphanumeric, you got to type in the send key. And then it will know that you're. And then when, when you send it, it'll, it'll, it'll give you a check mark. And that no, that signifies that it's got that I've got your data. Okay, Emma, is that Emma? Is that good? Clear, is that clear? Good. All right. Emma over here. Right. It's good. Yeah. Good. Right. I'm just practicing names. I'm trying to practice names anyway. Pete, everything good? Yeah. Good. All right. Good. Did you get your? Did you click? Did you click the send key? You got a check mark. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. All right. One minute. Nika, where's your clicker? Your clicker. You don't have one. You better get it. Were you looking up five and diagrams? Yeah. yeah, right. You're trying to look up the answer. It's pretty interesting what you guys are typing in. Now, on this problem, I'm going to count every answer as correct. All right, so just give me your best thought. All right, and I'll do that with clicking. You know, sometimes there's a right answer and only that gets points. But for this one, I'm going to give her, you know, as long as it's, you know, like not like Chuck Norris or something like that. Well, Chuck Norris I would have to give points to, but other than that. Okay, 10, 9, 8. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. There's only 78 answers, and there's 80 people and more clicking, so hit the send key. If you haven't done it already. All right, that's it. Now, uh, let me... Now, this won't be on the YouTube, but let's take a look at this. Hold on. Uh, so here's some of the answers. All right. Attract. Attraction. Actually, that's not what's happening here. But it's, you know, it's, but the, you know, the, the previous one was, and, and other Feynman diagrams can be, more than one, uh, can be used to model attraction and repulsion as well. Collision is interesting, actually. Uh, decrease. What's decreasing? I don't know what the answer to that is. Let's go down a little bit. Come on, baby. All right. Deflection. No, direction, yeah, that's the di distance vectors. Actually, what d distance vectors, position vectors, no, that's not what this diagram is because of the arrows. The arrows show you, you know, point A to point B motion for, except for the photon. Did you know that a photon doesn't experience time? It's just there. It's everywhere. It's kind of like uh, it's it's kind of like Bruce Lee, you know. Let be water, my friend. Direction, distance vectors, down, downhill. Yeah, physically that's what it looks like, but 
Now, here's the thing about that. That one looks like it's going downhill, but this is not graph paper. It's a temporal diagram. See that CT axis? That means the that that represents later times toward the top, earlier times toward the bottom. All right, so going downhill is not a good interpretation on this, although I will give you points for it. Let's see if I can move this thing. Drop energy, ELE. Ooh, extinction level event. Uh, elect before photo loss. Electron before photon loss. Electric field, electricity, electron is wrong. Electron split, electrons excited. <laughs> IDK, infinite, initial movement. Lower energy magnitude, negative. Oh, oh, negative. That's not an, that's, that's an electron's branch of the diagram, but guess what, my, my wonderful students? That is not negative. Come on, baby. Pause. P-O-S. Positronon. <laughs> Proton, no. Reflect, reflection. Repel, slope, space, spin. Time reverse. Well, guess what? Okay, let me bring this back over. Oops. Come on, baby. Uh, you know what that 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 blue line that down that looks downhill to the left? Time is flowing toward the top of the page, right? So the, the blue arrow that's going up and to the left, that's an electron. It's moving to the left. It's moving to smaller values of X with time at some speed. On this graph, it's a straight line, so it's not speeding up. The only acceleration is at the bend in the So how do you interpret that, that bl second blue line, downhill one? Now, there was a couple students that got it right. That is interpreted in two ways. As an electron moving backwards in time, because that's what it is, or as a positron, the antimatter partner of the electron moving forward in time. And that is how you interpret that. A positron breaking to the right. An electron breaking to the left. So this is particle creation right here from a photon. Right? The photon doesn't exist any after that, that point where all three of them join. So uh, that's the quantum level thinking about electrons. Now, let's keep going. Hit your refresh key. And let's do a multiple choice question here. What is the direction of the net force on the electron? Now, that's in blue. There's, and there's, you know, there's nothing else in the picture. So just and don't think about gravity. Just think about electrical forces. All right. So this one, hit your refresh button and, uh, and then type in your letter. A, B, C, D, or E. See, because the net force is zero, is that really an option here? Because the, the charges cancel out. That's it. So electrically neutral. That's just. So, but is that the correct answer? E. 15 seconds. 
10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. All right. Uh, well, this is kind of interesting. Take a look at this. Here's the distribution. Of, so there's a little bit of controversy here. All right. And it looks like some of you got tripped up with the letter E. Now, when I, when I, you know, tell you stuff like that, do not let me catch you napping. I'm trying to shake you sometimes. You know, say it's electrically neutral, so it's got to be zero, right? When you see me making, you know, an expression like that, you know, like I'm trying to sell you a used car, you know, it's everything's good, you know. Do not let me catch you napping. The answer here is the right word. Yeah, it's being attracted towards the proton. All right. So add this to your notes. And students, we're working our way up to a, a brain burner here in a few minutes in which making this decision is one of the steps in figuring out the brain burner. All right. And you got to do it rigorously and logically. All right. Now, here's the here's the arrow for the net force. Uh, on the electron, yeah, it's being pulled towards the proton. That's what they do. Everybody knows that. All right, now let's do another question. What direction is the net force on the proton? Fifteen seconds to vote. Ten, nine, eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. See, I, I sped you up on this one because hopefully this when we look at the answers here. Yeah, everybody. See now look at this. See how you guys have progressed? From Don't laugh. That means you're thinking and you're learning. And it's, I love seeing that, you know, from a big distribution of answers to a, a set answer. Okay, so your answer is leftward. Here's the arrow. All right, now, this is all uh, electrostatic interaction 101. Let's get down to some nitty-gritty here. The Coulomb interaction or the electrostatic force, here's the force law. As a vector law, now we're going to talk about this, all right? The electrostatic force from particle one on particle two is equal to that jazz over on the right. Now, notice I haven't said, I haven't made one of them red and one blue, but I am saying that they're opposite signs. So Q1 and Q2, all right? Now, if they're opposite signs, we at least know this, that the direction of the force from one on particle two is back towards particle one, Q1, all right? Now, let's look at the guts of that equation. Inside the parentheses, that's the magnitude of the force. You have a constant called K. That's the Coulomb constant. It's 9 times 10 to the 9 in the uh, Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared in the metric system. Now, we're not going to work with it, calculate with it today, but eventually we will. Q1 and Q2 uh, are measured in Coulombs, or sometimes we, we uh, measure it in fundamental charges, the charge on the proton or the electron. And then down in the denominator is the square of the distance, R squared. That's the distance between the two charges. Okay, so that goes downstairs in the denominator. Now, that all goes into the parentheses. That's your, that's your magnitude. And actually, it's not, it's not a true magnitude because if the two signs are different, Q1 and Q2, that stuff inside the parentheses 
is going to be negatory. Right? Make a note of that. In this case, it is. And plus, we got a minus sign out in front. Right? Now, on the back end, we've got that little vector R with a little caret over the top. That's called R hat. And then 2, 1 is the direction from 2 to 1. Now, it's a unit vector. It doesn't have any dimensions. It's not measured in meters. And it's, it's meant to simply give you the direction. And the magnitude and stuff comes from the stuff in front of it. All right, so it's going to be a bunch of newtons because it's a force. And it's going to be multiplied by R21. Now, what is R21? Here it is. All right. And see that little blue aqua vector I just put in there? All right, see that? That's a unit vector, different color from the force vector. Okay, it doesn't have any dimensions. And it's pointing from 2 in the direction of 1. And that's what you have to use in at the, at the, after the parentheses. So mentally... You have to think, okay, all my vectors are going to be in the direction of R21, um, plus or minus, uh, depending on the sign of the, the quotient, and also the sign in front of the quotient. All right, so we got to analyze that. Now, I'm going to park this thing over to the side a little bit, all right, just for, you know, for book bookkeeping purposes so you can see a little bit more clearly. But it's supposed to be pointing directly along that line. But we already have the force on there. All right. Now let's look at this. Let's look at the stuff uh, inside the parentheses. Okay. KQ1, Q2 over R squared. Now R squared is always positive. So make a note of that. It's a square of a number. All right. K is a positive. It's a constant. We always give it a positive value. 9 times 10 to the 9 in the metric system. Newtons per coulomb squared, uh, Newton meters squared per coulomb squared. Q1 and Q2, those can be positive or minus. Now, they're opposite signs, so I don't know if Q1 is positive or minus, but whatever, whatever is true, one of them is minus and one of them is positive. So that whole parenthesis is negatory, <laughs> all right? And then, in f so if that's all I had, the force would be in the opposite direction of r hat to 1. But I've got that minus sign in front of everything. So I got minus times minus times r hat to 1, and that means the force points in the direction of r hat to 1. All right? Now, by the same token... Uh, you have uh, F2 from 2 on particle 1. Now, it uses a different uh, unit vector, R hat 1, 2. Right? And I didn't draw that one in, but you can sketch it in into your notes if you like. All right? Now, we're going to be using this force law in a minute. You're going to be tr trying to decipher among yourselves, and then you're going to be telling me about your decisions, and then you're going to be typing in some numbers on a brain burner. Okay, so we got to, we're going to have to deal with, you know, opposite charges. But you know what else? What happens if you have the same sign? You know, like two negatives in the numerator, you know, that big quotient, or two positives. What, what do you do then? Well, let's take a look. Q1 and Q2 are the same sign. Now we use the same formula. But here's the difference. That quotient is positive. All right? So now R21 is still, you know, here's R21 you know, right there. All right? But, it's, but now I have a negative number of newtons because got, I've got a positive quotient. That tells me how many newtons. I've got the minus sign. That actually handles the repulsion or attraction. And what direction is this going to be if they're both the same sign? What direction is the force on Q2 going to be? 
down and to the left or up and to the right? That's right. It's going to be the other direction. It's going to be opposite direction of um, R21. So that minus sign in front and a positive quotient in the parentheses. And then R21 is standard gives you something pointing away from Q1. Th that means they repel, all right? And here's the, you know, the same philosophy down here. And notice that in this formula, it's really nice because um, I'm trying to remember your name back there. Kendra, yeah. Is it Kendra? It's not Kendra? Oh, this is Kendra up here. Direct opposite. See, I'm, you know, opposite sides of the room. The blue shirt. What's your name again? Carly. Carly, okay, with a K. Okay. So, Carly, you know, we've got repulsion here. And that's positive and positive. If you have positive Q1 and positive Q2, bing, you got repulsion. If you have negative Q1 and negative Q2, Bing, you got repulsion. All right, and so this form will all this this formula. Now we're not going to, you know, be doing a huge amount of trig with this, but you could. I mean, r hat two one is basically a sine and a cosine. The, the components of it, you know, are sine and cosine of the angle, the tilt angle between the two, you know, along that dotted line. Uh, so you, you know, you can you can work it out. It's, it's not too hard. Now. One more thing I want to point out, and this is where we're going uh, for the rest of class. And you're going to be burning your brains about this. And I want you to work with your neighbors in the next few problems. The denominator here is R squared. So if I, Kara, if, if I double the distance, you know, so, so Q1 is, you know, off near the floor, all right? The size is, that means I've got twice as many centimeters or nanometers or whatever I've got. And then I'm squaring that. That means my, I've got a bigger denominator inside that quotient. So that means my, the number of newtons that I've got is smaller by a ratio of one to four. All right. So in this case, it, if, if you consider this to be one to one, then if I double the distance, it'd be one. To, it, it'd be a fourth as big. You know, so however many newtons you got, you know, all right. Now, let me pause for questions. Yeah. Could you explain again that R, R hat two one? Like, what, what is it? R hat two one is a is what we call a directional unit vector. So it's not pointing along the x-axis. You know, the, the dimension, you know, the, the components of a the x-axis unit vector would be 1, 0, all right? Uh, the y-axis uh, unit vector would be 0, 1, all right? But this one, you got to mix because it's tilted. So its magnitude is 1. It doesn't change the size of the force but it mixes the directions. So it's kind of like a directional mixing vector. You know, so just think, just think, you know, uh, what do they call those things? The uh, Nutribullet. You know, so you're mixing up, you know, so you're making a smoothie, you know, and you get a little bit leftward, a little bit downward for, R, for this R21. Now, if you have different geometry, you know, you just got to redo it again. But it's always going to be a sine and a cosine of the tilt angle uh, along that dotted line. So it's mixing. So it's uh, so. Uh, so here's another. And you might want to make a note of this. In terms of, you know, the neutral bullet, the mixing of of uh, what it means is here. It means you have. The size of the force is given by the quotient, all right? And then the direction 
our hat 2-1 tells you some of the Newtons are going to be downward. And some of the Newtons are going to be leftward. All right? So the, the X component is going to be negatory. You know, so many Newtons. And the Y component is going to be negative, negatory, downward. So how do you figure out the size of the full vector? I mean, if you have, if you have a, a downward vector like this, and a leftward vector like this, then you do Pythagorean theorem, all right? And then and the cosines and the sine, sine and cosine fall right out of that, all right? So it's a way of uh, numerically distributing some Newtons downward and some Newtons leftward in just the right proportion that they, the full vector points directly at Q1. Yeah, that thing is the net force in two dimensions. Uh, actually, it's it's actually three dimensions if you want. But we're, you know, our diagrams are two dimensions. So that thing is the, the full force. The, the parentheses gives you the number of newtons. With the minus sign, that gives you the magnitude of the force. And then the r hat 2, 1 tells you the direction. Now, if I have two, two particles on the x-axis and another one on the y-axis, then all I have to do is worry about 1, 0 and 0, 1. You know, there's no, tr you know, it's easy. But then your net force is going to be a mixture of a leftward or a rightward and an upward or a downward. So then you, then, then you got to do trig at the end anyway. So it's, you know, and we'll be doing that uh, probably over the weekend when I give you guys some homework. Some basic, basic, basic homework. Another question. Good. All right. Everybody on the. Hey, is this is this the right side of the room for you guys? Because it's my left, and I'm always facing you. All right. So everybody on the right. Yeah. Every, everybody good on the right? All right, everybody on the left? All right, let's keep going. Hit the refresh key on your clicker. What is the direction of the net force? Ooh, now you've got two forces on the rightmost proton, and they are equally spaced. But one of them is an electron. One of the two source particles are over there. And your target particle is the proton, and then there's a proton in the middle. So Now, I want you to talk with your neighbors, discuss it, because we're going to be doing a group evaluation here in just a minute. And, hey, you guys, I want you to... Uh, Ignore gravity for now. We'll give him a few minutes on this one. In fact, why don't you guys stroll around now and uh, just kibitz. Yeah, just check us, see if they have questions.
The room is awfully quiet. Okay, 10 seconds to get your vote in. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Oops, okay. Let's see what your. Oh my goodness. Geniuses. Hey. <laughs> yeah, uh, right word. Now, now we're going to get to the embarrassing part. We're going to see if I can, well, hopefully it won't be embarrassing. But I want you to stand up and address the class and tell you, tell us why that net force is right word. Raise your hand if you want to stand up. Okay, those two guys, you can't, only one from, from your group. Anybody else that's bold? I mean, because a lot of you answer correctly. Okay. What do you, well, how about you guys back there at that table? You're smiling at me. But no, I like that. Okay, I see. Okay, now I'm going to try to call on several of you. Okay. And what's your name again? Daniel. Daniel. Ramos. Sierra. And what's your name again? Emily. Okay, now everybody, uh, you guys here at the center table, Emily, go ahead and stand up and address the class and tell us why the net force, in your words, okay. funky or not. Right. Yeah. Well, what about the electron? Okay, so that's good. That's part of the answer, Daniel. All right. For me, I think it's that um, all the particles are great forces on each other, but right. But we only care about the one on the right. I mean, the other ones have forces on them. Yeah. But the one on the right. What? <laughs> you mean, so so you're talking about two different forces here. Yeah. All right. Who else? Okay. What is your name again? Andrew. Andrew. Go ahead and stand up. Uh, so the proton on the right is experiencing. Talk this way to everybody. Experiencing two forces, one from the electron and one from the proton. All right, that's what Daniel's theory was. Okay, but the force from the proton, because it's much closer, it's actually twice as close, four times as strong as the force from the electron. Daniel, is that right? Yeah. Emily, get off your phone. You're supposed to be listening to this. Oh, you're taking notes. Okay. I thought you were on Facebook or something. I mean, it, it would be nice to Instagram these guys, but so does that make sense to you? <laughs> okay, Daniel. Uh, Daniel and Andrew, stand together. We need twice the volume here to reach all the way to Emily. Okay, Daniel, go ahead and start your, your explanation and, and leave part of it out, and Andrew, you finish it. All right, so all the particles exert forces on each other, but because the particle in the center is closer. Daniel, uh, Andrew? Because, <laughs> no, 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 
Andrew's not listening now. A bunch of slackers in here. Come on. Um, so because the proton is closer. It's exerting more and more the proton than the All right. But wait a minute. The electron. So the electron is exerting fewer newtons. All right. But what about the direction? And okay, sit down. Emily, what about the the force from the electron on the rightmost proton? Incorrect. Electron force on a proton. What direction is it going to be? It's going to be leftward. All right, so it's a smaller force and it's leftward. All right, so now if you're doing a calculation, the the positive force from the from the proton would be like positive 70 newtons, and the other one would be negative something newtons. All right, so you you could add them up that way. All right. Okay, thanks you guys. Now I want you to hit your refresh key. And now this one is the brain burner, and I'll just say at 10.44 a.m., it's been nice knowing you. Your brains are now, well, hopefully not. They, hopefully they won't get fried too much. But um, here it is. If two protons repel each other with a force of magnitude 200 nanonewtons, so they're fairly close together, all right, 200 nanonewtons, how large is the net force on the rightmost proton? All right, now, you're going to have to calculate. So hit the refresh key, and let me start this one. This is going to be numeric. All right, and type in a whole number of nanonewtons, and then hit the send key. Because we already know the right, it's going to be a rightward force, so positive newtons, or positive nanonewtons. So work with your group. Try to figure it out. And uh, Kendra and uh, Andrew, you guys could circle around now too. All right. And I think I'll, I'll stroll around as well. Okay, Schmitty, what's your first name again? Bradley. Bradley. Let's, let me, let me, I'm going to ask you questions here, but I want to practice names first. Uh, your name is uh, Olivia and Russell, Paul, Jerry, Ashley, Epley. Okay. Uh, Andrew, Chris, Nuge, and uh, I can't remember your name. Okay, now, you, do you guys have a theory on how to do this? How to calculate this? One fourth of the nano news. Yeah, but what about the direction? Together, so or you subtract that, so it'd be 150 to the right. I don't know. What, well, that's that's a that's a nice. I mean, that's kind of what Daniel and and Andrew were talking about over there. All right. Don't just sit there. Talk to each other. See, that's why you're in groups. You guys talking about stuff? Yeah, what is this stuff? Coulomb's law. Yeah. yeah. What about making this calculation? I mean, we're given the two forces, Q1 and Q2, but Q3 over there, you got to figure that one out. But you also know that they're equally distant. Each, you know, the, there's d nanometers between each one. 
right? So one starts at zero, the next one's at one D, the next one's at two D, so. Okay. I guess that would be the distance. So you guys getting your thoughts together here? Hmm? Yeah, R here between each neighbor is D. Okay. So from the electron to the middle proton is D. From the middle proton to the target proton is D. From the electron to the target proton, 2D. So that goes in the denominator. All right. That tells you how, how the force gets smaller from the proton on the target, or from the electron on the target proton. What is your name again? Ashley. Ashley Epley. Gabriel, Gabby, Gabby Rod, Ramos, okay. Michaela. So do you have any ideas about the magnitudes and stuff? Yeah. You guys have a theory over there? What? Thinking? Excellent. I'm heading right over. That's what I want to hear. That's what I want you guys to be doing. Thank you. Wait a minute. What's your name again? Melanie. Melanie. Del Toro. Del Toro. Okay. Are you guys all in a group? It's supposed to be a group of three, but. Yeah. Okay. So what are you thinking? So you said that the quotient was the magnitude of the force, correct? Mm -hmm. So you're saying that the force is 200 now. This is not right, though. Then not, the radius has no, the it should be. No, it's not. R is equal to D or for the electron, 2D. Okay, proton to proton, it's D. Oh, so you're just using uh, D as distance. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's... Hey, you guys, D is a number of, like, nanometers or something. It doesn't mean diameter. Yeah. And so, so X is equal to zero at the electron, and then, like, if D is seven nanometers, then the middle proton would be X equals seven nanometers, and then the target proton would be 14 nanometers. Okay, but I'm, I'm not saying that it's seven. I'm just saying if it were seven. You don't need to know the number. You just need to know the proportions. They're equally spaced. Okay, so then I just thought that was diagonal. Okay, so then would you be giving us the F? Are you giving us then the Q1 and the Q2? See, this is not right here either. Because that should be, that's Q1 and Q2. That should be E for the proton, and minus E for the electron, and not that, but it should equal 200 nanometers, okay? And that's your D squared. Now, now then, right, so then your other one is going to be a different quotient with 2D quantity squared, and that's going to be some number of nanometers. So that's what you got to figure out. That's similar numerator. Actually, the same except for the minus signs. Okay. Actually, I take that back. This, this is for nearest neighbors. This is E and E. They're both protons. Oh, okay. Right? So this is E. And this one's E and minus E down here. But that doesn't affect the, the magnitude. Okay. Because it's... It's still E squared on, on top. Okay. And then you got that minus sign out in front. But, yeah, but the, the key is the denominator. All right. How are you guys doing over here? Did you figure it out? What do you got? Wait a minute. Let me turn off the mic. 
I don't want to blab it to the rest of the class. So. One fifty to the right. Are you ready to defend that in court? You know, may it please the court. You ready to defend that? Do you guys have it now? What's your group? You three? Okay. You guys ready to defend that? If you think it's right? Did you type it in? You don't have your clicker. Do you have your clicker? Yeah. Do you have your clicker? So minus number of nanonewtons. The distance is doubled, but yeah, that's right. Down here, no, not quadrupled. The number, the denominator would be quadrupled. But the overall quotient would be one fourth the size of the nearest neighbor's force. So you're right. Yeah. Oh, what did I say? Anyways. So, well, I figured, yeah, if it's possible, that means that 200 has been already possible. Okay, yeah, you can say it that way. Yeah, you can say it's already been quadrupled. Yeah, okay. That's kind of a back, left hand and backwards, but yeah, that makes sense. All right, good. All right. Do you guys have an answer? Well, we're not sure if it's right, but the way we thought of it was that if they're repelling, then the electron is attracting at a quarter of that. Right. That's nice. That's a good way to put it. And then we just did the math. And do the math. So just whisper what your answer is. Don't tell these guys. Oh, wait a minute. He's going, okay. Don't tell those guys. Do you guys have an answer? Yes. Look at me. You guys have answers in? All right, let me turn on my mic. All right. Two minutes to get your answer in. Starting. Right about now. Two minutes. Get your answers in. And I see some of you got to put answers in. So get them in. Make a decision. And I'm going to, I'm going to ask two, t two new tables to give explanations. And if you want to pitch in an explanation, if you're right, then uh, you can volunteer for that. But I already have two in mind. It's a nice little problem, right? Yeah. <laughs> and no quantum field theory needed. Yeah. One minute.
five, four, three, two, one, zero. Okay. Uh oh. Correct. 150 is correct, but look at these. You know, you guys are going to be using your eye clickers on exams for calculations. And I'll be able to look at your answers, same as I do here. And if it's a likely looking answer that's wrong, but is uh, barking up the right tree, like, the, why is this one? not terribly wrong. It's wrong, but it's not like from another universe. Forgot to square. All right, now, so they used half the, half the size they should have. Now, let me get rid of this. And um, I would like... You guys, uh, what is your name again? Yeah, you three. Uh, Brandon. Brandon, Megan, Mackenzie, and Mila, Alec, and Katina. Okay, those three guys I talked to at length, and they, they had good explanations. Mila, do you want to stand up and give an explanation? And then... Uh, and then somebody from your group. Go ahead. Make sure everybody can hear you. From what? Okay. Right. That two factor of two in the bottom is everything. And that's why you don't have to know D. If they're equally spaced, D doesn't matter. As long as you know one of the interaction forces. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Okay. Uh, who wants to talk? Thank you, Mila. Great. Uh, who wants to? Good. Right. Neil, is he right? Is it, did he explain it good? Yeah. All right. Well, that's kind of like what Mila was 
So were you guys eavesdropping on, uh, or eavesdropping on? I was eavesdropping to ensure that my name would be the only girl out there. No. Now, uh, what is your name again? Yeah. Mackenzie. Uh, what What was that phrase that I said I liked? With the, your explanation? Go ahead and stand up. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Mac Mackenzie had a really nice explanation, if she could just remember it. A little bit of tension? A little bit of on the spot? Yeah, but it's not the force. It doesn't matter what the electron is experiencing. It matters what the rightmost particle is experiencing from the electron. So the, the best way to say it is that right, the target proton on the right experiences less from the electron uh, and it's leftward and it's 50 in, in magnitude and stuff. All right, great. Thank you. Anybody else want to... Uh, exceed those explanations. Ooh. Okay, stand up and ask your question. And wait a minute, what's your name again? Heidi. Hassock. Hassett. Yeah. Well, conservation of charge doesn't enter into it, but the distances do. Now, you were asking about the middle pro. All right. What's the net force on the middle proton? Not zero. <laughs> zero is wrong. You've got a positive and a negative left and right of it, and each one has a pull of 200 newtons. But in what direction, or a push or a pull, but in what direction does that middle proton get its newtons? All to the left. So the ant, so see how the, the forces are different? That middle one's got 400 newtons to the left. All right. Now, what about the electron? It's getting 200 to the right from the middle proton. And how much is it getting from the far proton? Not 150. 50, because it's twice as far. So that's, a hundred, that's 200 plus 50. That's, uh, so that's 250. So they're all different. Now, before we dismiss, let me close up this session. I'm going to give you a little bit of a preview. The homework I'm going to give you a calculation relative to the water molecule. Now Raise your hand if you know the angle formed by the two hydrogens and the oxygen. Those of you that have had chemistry, what is it? It's so like 105, depending on who calculates it. All right, so it's not a perfect right angle. So uh, by supper time tonight, hopefully, I'll have a little bit of water molecule calculation uh, or... Uh, it probably won't be the water, the water molecule. It'd probably be uh, a pseudo water molecule. In other words, a little bit bigger, so that the forces are a little bit bigger than. But it'll be the same geometry as a water molecule. And then, oh, you know what else? What's the? Uh, how many electrons does a water molecule have? 
or how many electrons does an oxygen atom have? Eight. So we got. Yeah. So we're gonna. So anyways, we're gonna have we're gonna have a, a dipole to work on. Electric dipole and some reading. And hopefully by Monday we'll be back to full speed ahead. All right, I'll see you later. Nice session today, you guys.